Their plan is to make sure that Nigeria will go hunger. Their plan is to make sure they destabilize this country. Their plan is to make sure that people will not be able to afford food products. Their plan is to make sure that our parents will not go to the farm. The rate of insecurity in Nigeria, there is no doubt that it is increasing. And today, the Yoruba elders and Afanifere, they are crying out loud. They are raising an alarm. Their people are being kidnapped here and there. But you know one thing, it's not limited to these people because so many people are still experiencing the same thing. The insecurity situation in Nigeria is holistic. It's not all about Yoruba people, Hausa people, Igbo people, people of Plateau State, or people of uh, Southern Kaduna. They say the renewed banditry in the area is disturbing and disheartening. They tax Southwest governors to rejig security architecture in the region. We want government approval to enter the forest to chase out bandits. The hunters volunteered. So this is what is happening today in the Southern West of Nigeria. Yoruba Social Cultural Organization, Afenifere, Yoruba Council Worldwide, and the other stakeholders in the southwest of the country have raised the alarm over the resurgence of kidnapping in the region, describing it as disturbing and disheartening. Out of context, do you remember that uh, day, that was the day before yesterday? I talked about the issue of a kidnapping that is happening from Edo State down to the western part of the country. So the Afenifere and the Yoruba elders, they are now raising an alarm because of what is going on. Let us read these articles to the end and let us talk about this disheartening situation that is going on. Now, they raised the alarm following last Sunday's attack on a commercial bus on the Jebu Ode Shagamu Expressway and the adoption of 20 travelers by the bandits. Concerned elders and leaders in the region said the new train was unacceptable and challenged their governors to rise to the challenge and rejig the security architecture in the area. The Publicity Secretary of the Pan-Yoruba Social Cultural Organization of Enifere, Jari Ajayi, said the resurgence of the kidnapping in the southwest and, and other part of the country is very disturbing and disheartening, saying that they thought they have been a thing of the past. It's shown up again. It's shown up again. So these people, they were thinking that um, the issue of kidnapping is the thing of the past, and they are complaining that it has shown up again. That is a very wrong thing to think about. You see, the purpose why these people are kidnapping is what these people are supposed to be asking. Yoruba elders have any ferret. Have you people sit to ask, why are these people kidnapping? What is their purpose? What is their mission? If you do not try to inquire the purpose and the mission of people, why they are kidnapping, it will be very difficult for you to get the solution to what is going on. You may chase them out today. They will come back tomorrow. So the question is, why are they kidnapping? Now, I want to digress a little. If Yoruba is a country, if Yoruba is a nation or Dudua is a nation, do you think that foreign elements will come from other areas, come into their, what is it called, to their country and begin to kidnap? Now, if you see these people, maybe during the day, they will just go with people, they will enter the market. You can't hold them. They will tell you that they are Nigerians, that Nigerians have the right to go anywhere. But they don't remember that Nigerians don't have the right to go anywhere to constitute nuisance and bring in security to that region or to that area. So, the reason why I'm saying this is because right from time, I have told people, and I am still saying it, that I don't believe in one Nigeria. I believe in disintegrated Nigeria. I believe in Nigeria with regions. We are regions, we manage our own security, manage our own resources. This is the only thing that can save us from all this thing that has been going on. If not, this thing is going to continue. And I am raising this alarm once more that the food, you know, the commodities in the market, the food stores, they are expensive because people are no longer going to farm like that to harvest and the rate at which things are in Nigeria inflation. But there is a danger ahead of us and that is what is going to happen next year. That is the issue of people who are not going to plant this year. Because as people are not planting, what are they going to harvest next year? That is another issue that we are going to look into. It is very terrible. Now, the article continues. It says, we in Afenifere feel disturbed and it is disheartening to hear news of kidnapping again after a long time. We urge all tiers of government to buckle up and develop a modern security technology to nipe it in the board. Some of the things they can do include using modern security technology such as drones and CCTV to monitor events in the region. Out of context. Do you remember that for some time, and that was a month ago, I showed you a video where bandits were using drone to look for where people are 
and carry out their kidnapping. So if the bandits are using drone and our security agencies, they don't even use drone to fish out the bandits or to, to fish out the bandits, do you think that they are going to win this war against bandit Roy? I'm just asking, do you think that they are going to win this war against bandit Roy? So let's look into what the Southwest security architecture called Amatoku, what they faced recently. That was yesterday. Hess men attack Amatoku cops in Ondo, injure many operatives. Do you see how the doors are being connected? So they started kidnapping. Their only threat is not the military. The military is not the threat. The police is not the threat because they know that they will defeat the police. The military can't even know where they are because the military don't know road. The only security architecture that knows road, that knows where they are, is the uh, Amatokun. So these Amatokun people, they are the one trying to safeguard the Yoruba land. And this former governor, who is now uh, dead, that has passed on, Akere Donu, is one of the people that was founding this uh, Amatokun. Now, his men attack these Amatokun cops in on to injure many operatives. Because they know that these people, they are the only threat they have. So whenever they will be able to attack these people, threaten them out of the area, they will have upper hand to do what they want to do. This is the Nigeria your people want to carry in your head. But if these people have their own region, if Yoruba people have their own region and they are managing their own security, they're not born anybody where to come into Yoruba and start kidnapping, start attacking everybody, start chasing people out of their ancestral homes. It will not happen. It is happening because we are in one Nigeria. So what does it take to make sure that nigeria will disintegrate in peace that is a story for another day now let me run down this article for you it was written on july 6 2024 from shara reporters and it started it says some personnel of the ondo state security network agency uh, popularly known as amotoku have been reportedly attacked by a group of bandits suspected to be herdsmen it was learned that the personnel uh, the personnel sustained different degree of injuries in the incident that happened on Friday in Akure, the state capital. The operatives were said to have arrested some cows which allegedly destroyed farmlands in Osi and Igboba communities in the north local government uh, area of the state on Friday, out of context. So the crime of these Amotokun people is that they arrested, um, they arrested uh, some cattle that destroyed people's crop. And that is the right thing to do. You are rearing animals. I am cultivating my farmland and planting. You can't bring your own to destroy my own. If I talk, you begin to fight me. So they arrested some cows. You know, you know cows are citizens now. So these people have to return it to start attacking them. And you call yourself. See, we don't hate the people of Nigeria. I don't hate Nigeria because Nigeria is my country. Nobody hates his country. But if you refuse to speak the truth because of what is going on, your children will grow old. They will come out and begin to talk what you did not talk today. The earlier we realize that this country is not good for us, the system is not good for us, the better it is going to be possible for us to go out in peace out of this mess. Because I remember last month before the Senate went for recess, there was a bill in the Senate chamber to ban the open grazing. And everywhere the hair was loosed. People are saying that, ah, the cattle, uh, you are not supposed to restrict people who are leading cattle. But cattle, the cows are not citizens. The cows are not citizens. We are talking about going different areas, destroying people's farms. It's a crime. But, you know, in Nigeria, it will not be a crime because people who are sponsoring them are in the government. And you said Nigeria is a country, a good country. You want Nigeria to be better. And you are seeing what is making Nigeria not to be good. And you are keeping quiet. The next article is, it was learned that the Amatoku officials were taking the arrested cows, numbering about 120 to the state headquarters of the Amatoku command in Akure, when the headers accosted them on the Akure Ado Expressway and attacked them. The source told Punch that as they were taking the arrested cows to Amatoku headquarters in Akure, on reaching to Sango area of Akure, the headers came out with dangerous weapons and attacked the officers to prevent them from taking the uh, cows away. A viral video also shows some of the officers of the cops shooting sporadically into the air to disperse the attackers while the injured ones were quickly taken into the Amotokun Hindus van. Meanwhile, the public relations officer of the Ondo Amotokun, Jimo Adenike, who confirmed the incident, said an investigation has commenced. So, this is what we are facing in Nigeria. And I believe the capacity of Amotokun, they have been trying for Yoruba people, you know, 
they have been doing anything in their own capacity to make sure that uh, they solve the security situation. It is only the people that can do it. Forget about the police. Forget about the military. Just the people. If the people have the will, have the mind to do it, they will do it, and it will come to pass. Don't ever believe that a politician is a leader. Don't ever believe that. Because the system that we have produces politicians. It doesn't produce leaders. And so you can have a politician who knows nothing about leadership, and he's leading you. Politicians are concerned about the next election. That's all they're interested in. That's why they cannot be leaders. But leaders are different. Leaders are concerned about the next generation. I want you to compare those two thoughts the next time you have a politician come to your house wanting to vie for your vote. Just ask him, uh, what is your vision for my children? I will sit and listen for 20 minutes for you to tell me what it is. He will leave your house. <laughs> because he has no interest in your children's children. His concern is to stay in power, to keep the position, to win the next election. This is why they cannot lead. When you are going to have a conversation with a politician, you should actually try this as a test. You, by the way, as a citizen of a community, you have a right to be seen by the mayor. I hope you know that. If you voted for a mayor, the mayor works for you. Therefore, you have a right to see him. You can make an appointment to see any public officer you voted for. Did you know that? That's your legal right. If he don't want to see you, you can take him to court. That's democracy. So I want you to make an appointment to go and see your mayor or go and see your governor and just sit and say, I want 30 minutes with you, sir. And ask him about that list right there. And, sir, what is your purpose for being in leadership in this city? What is your purpose? The first question will make him very nervous. Second question, what is your, what is your passion for our community? He'll be wondering what you're talking about. What are you talking about? I just want to build roads and bridges and, and provide jobs. No, 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 no. What is your passion? And this is why we need to question the leaders we have. And so I have a little thought here. I call it politics versus leadership. Let's talk about it for a second. Number one, politicians focus on programs, not vision. Number two, politicians' priority is securing the next election, not securing the next generation. Their focus is different. Number three, politicians are preoccupied with promises, not purpose. What we need is statesmen, stateswomen. We don't need more politicians. A statesman is an interesting human. A statesman, think of the next generation.